Hi, my name is Armin, and today I would like to share with you my project for this year's science fair. My project title is How Does Bioluminescence Work? The branch of science that I had chosen was marine biology. Marine biology is a study of marine organisms, their behaviors, and interactions with the environment. Famous discoveries of marine biology include the first systematic plot of currents and temperatures in the ocean, the Mid Atlantic Ridge, and the Mariana Trench. Famous marine biologists. Marine biologists study biological, chemical, physical, and geological oceanography to understand marine organisms. The leading scientists in this field involve Sir Charles Newell Thompson, Anton Frederick Brunn, Rachel Carson, and many more. Sir Charles Newell Thompson had discovered more than 4,000 new marine species during his travels and research. He was one of the leaders of the HMS Challenger expedition during which he had plotted ocean currents and temperatures. He was the first to describe the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and the Mariana Trench. He was also the author of the earliest deep sea biology textbooks called The Depths of the Sea. Here are the questions that I had about marine biology and in the end I had chosen. How does bioluminescence work? Why did I choose this project title? I chose this project title as I found it the most interesting and because I had, this, I had the least information and knowledge on this particular subject. Also, in an audience's perspective, I thought that this would be the most engrossing and appealing question to cover. Credibility, the quality of being trusted or how trustworthy something is. So how did I determine a source's credibility? So I made sure that the information is up to date by, examination, by examining the date it was published and I avoided sites where the author is unknown. Uh, and I also viewed the source's appearance, and I steered clear of sites run by businesses, and I looked for websites that were run by government agencies and um, universities as they have existed for a while and have a proven record of validity. I also considered the, um, the writing in the source uh, by looking for grammatical and spelling errors. So in this sheet is all the sources that I used, which I will come back to later. So what is bioluminescence? Bioluminescence is the emission of light by a chemical reaction within a living organism. It generally occurs in marine life, fungi, microorganisms such as bacteria and fireflies. It can be used to lure prey, attract mates. It can also be used as communication and protection. So model planning. So this is the diagram of my model showing the, the chemical equation that uh, results to bioluminescence. So, uh, so the chemical equation is luciferin plus oxygen goes to um, uh, oxyluciferin and light energy. And it also includes the enzyme luc luciferase. And to make the model, I used the following. I used clay, star a styrofoam board, glow-in-the-dark paint, blank paper, and colored paper. So this is the process. So first I made the enzyme luciferase using red modeling clay, and then I made spheres and um, cubes representing luciferin and oxygen, and I also made spheres, yellow spheres representing light energy, and then I painted them with glow-in-the-dark glow paint. So here's a picture of my um, of the light photons of the photons of light. Uh, in the dark, you can't really see the glow in the dark paint, but if you see it um, in real life and directly, it would be much brighter. So the problems that I faced was trying to come up with a model to make based uh, on my project title. This was probably because I could not find any practical or model on the subject that was already made, and also I also. Um, I, my, another struggle that I had was trying to gather all the all the stuff that I needed to make the model. So this is my overall model, and this should answer my question: How does bioluminescence work? So continuing from my last video, this is my overall model and the answer to my question, how does bioluminescence work, is that 
Uh, I found that bioluminescence requires a combination of two substances. These substances are luciferin and oxygen. Luciferin is a light producing um, is a light producing substance when uh, combined with oxygen. Also, it involves the enzyme called luciferase, which allows the chemical reaction to, to take place. This enzyme acts as a catalyst. And in this case, um, okay, so a catalyst enables a chemical reaction to proceed faster. And in this case, helps to combine um, oxygen and oxygen and luciferin. Therefore, this reaction produces light energy and the luciferin, which is now oxidized, converts to oxyluciferin. And here it shows the chemical equation for bioluminescence. Thanks for watching. Why does the moon have craters? Aim and hypothesis. My aim is to research the definition of impact craters and how they are formed. After finding out what impact craters are, I predicted that impact craters are formed when comets or asteroids hit the lunar surface. What is the definition of my field? The moon is a celestial body that makes an orbit around a planet and also the Earth's largest natural satellite. It moderates our home planet's wobble on its axis and causes tides. Here are a few famous discoveries about the moon. The moon has mountains and valleys just like Earth. The moon has giant holes known as lunar pits, also known as impact craters. James Lovell and William Anders were the first humans to enter lunar orbit. On the moon, unlike on the Earth, even the largest lunar mountains were formed in minutes or less, and, the, and liquid water cannot persist at the moon's surface. These are the leading scientists in this field. Galileo Galilei, he is also the one who discovered impact craters, Johannes Hevelius, Harrison Schmidt, Werner von Braun, Grove Carl Gilbert, and John William Draper, and Bruce Murray. These scientists have made amazing discoveries and a vast impact in this field. This is my mind map, and here I wrote the different questions I could explore, such as, what is the difference between simple and complex craters, or how long can an impact crater last? Why did I choose this topic? I chose this topic because the moon has been the key to make Earth a more livable planet, and I feel like we can uncover a lot of Earth's past by looking at this field, and it's also very interesting. Credibility. I will ensure that my sources are credible by using these techniques that I have mentioned. For example, I will make sure that the sources are up to date. I have also made a table of the sources I used. For my model, I created one of impact craters. As you can see, these are the only things you need. You can make this model by following these instructions. Here is the labeled version of my model. I labeled it by comparing my model to an actual impact crater. How are, how are craters on the moon formed? Craters on the moon are caused by asteroids and meteorites colliding with the lunar surface. However, the Earth has less impact craters on the moon This is main, than on the moon. This is mainly because the moon has no atmosphere to protect itself from impacting bodies and because of the very little geologic activity on the moon. Who discovered the craters on the moon? Galileo Galilei was probably the first scientist to recognize that the circular features on the moon are craters and not mountains. These are the different features of impact craters and their meanings. And these are some examples of impact craters. How long do craters on the moon last for? Due to the moon's lack of water, atmosphere, and tectonic plates, there is very little erosion, and some craters are found that exceed 2 billion years of age. And you can determine the age of a crater by observing how many smaller craters are accumulated within it. Types of craters. Lunar impact craters come in three basic types, simple craters, complex craters, and basins. Asteroids versus comets. It can be difficult to distinguish between the two types of impacts. Craters tend to be circular due to the explosion of the impactor. The size depends on the speed and the mass of the impactor. The speeds for both comets and asteroids would be similar. In a comet-made crater, may, you may be able to find evidence of water if the crater has a permanently shaded region. Does the angle of impact affect size? In case of large impact craters, Collapse of the central peak is more pronounced in the 
down rate direction. This basically means that the crater size decreases. In conclusion, uh, I have learned that impact craters are formed when asteroids and meteorites collide with the lunar surface. Thank you. Hi, my name is Alana and this is my science fair project. Physics is a branch of science that includes nature, properties of matter, and energy. A famous discovery in physics was the quantum theory by Max Planck in the 1900s. What is astronomy? It is the study of celestial objects and phenomena. Astronomy has let us understand the movement of stars and planets, the heliocentric model, Kepler's laws, the moons, and the moons of Jupiter. Leading scientists include Louis Alvarez for the development of the hydrogen bubble chamber and Aristarchus for claiming the sun was fixed in the center of the universe and the planets revolved around the sun instead of the other way around. Current research on astronomy. Recently, astronomers have detected the brightest and most energetic supernova on record. The outflow of this supernova traveled at nearly 13% of the speed of light. Future predictions show that the expansion of the universe will continue forever. If so, then a popular theory is that the universe will cool as it expands, so it will eventually become too cold to sustain life. This is why it can be referred to as heat death or the big chill of big freeze. Ideas for titles. What happens when a black hole dies? What happens when black holes collide? Can our sun turn into a black hole? And can time freeze in a black hole? I chose to do can, how can black holes grow? I've chosen this title because I enjoy learning about space, but I've never really understood black holes and its effect on other things in space. I thought this project would help me learn more about it so I can extend my knowledge. It will get me to think in a scientific way and it will teach me to use a scientific method to solve problems. So what is a black hole? A black hole is a region in space where all matter collapses in on itself. Gravity pulls so much that even light cannot escape. The first prediction of its existence was made in 1916 by Albert Einstein with his general theory of relativity. However, after decades of black holes being known only as theoretical objects, the first physical black hole ever discovered was spotted in 1971. Credibility is the quality of being trusted, believed in, or being convincing. You can know a website is credible by its writing sign, design of the site, sources, and date. Research questions. How does a black hole form? What happens when you get too close to a black hole? How are black holes discovered? Are there any black holes close to Earth? Do all stars develop into black holes? This is the information I got for after researching those questions. I've included the source link, positive and negative comments, and information from the source. I've rechecked this information so I know it's credible. This is a model of the satellite. We have the sunshade door, the aspect camera light shade, the solar array, which are the solar panels, high resolution mirror assembly, thrusters, Logan antenna, spacecraft module, transmission gratings, high resolution camera, and an integrated science instrument module. Information about the satellite. ESA has discovered has selected the Advanced Telescope for High Energy Astrophysics, Athena, as its second large class science mission. Athena will observe X-ray emissions from very hot materials just before it's engulfed by a black hole. It measures distortions due to gravitational light bending and time delay effects in the extreme environment. It's planned to launch in 2031. It has three goals, to study large-scale gas structures in the universe, to identify supermassive black holes, and to explode high-energy astrophysical events. This will determine how black holes change, how black holes grow, and how big they can get. This is a method I created to, to create the model from of the satellite. Evaluation. I found making the model a little bit tricky because the Play-Doh would not stick to the aluminium. And when I attached the solar panels onto it, I used toothpaste, I had toothpicks and a hot glue gun to stabilize it. This will create a more firm texture. Originally, I didn't add the in the aluminium because I thought it would be too difficult. But once I did, I made the it made the satellite feel more realistic. Overall, I found it very entertaining to model. Next time, I would add marking on the satellite in pen, and I would make it larger with more details. Thank you for listening. My science fair project.
My aim was to find out what makes sourdough bread sour. I want to know this because the sourdough bread is delicious and I want to know how to make it and learn why you have to do these steps. Um, these are some research questions we were asked to fill in. So the first one was definition of bread. It is food made of flour, water and yeast mixed together and baked. Um, what is what are the famous discoveries in this field one of the famous discoveries in sourdough bread is that it it's the only bread that uses a homemade starter so they don't buy the starter like regular bread um who are the leading scientists in the field biologists are the leading scientists in the field now these are some questions i asked myself with sourdough and non-sourdough bread. Carrying out research. What makes sourdough bread sour? Um, these were, that was the first one, which was very helpful. The second one was what makes regular bread different, which was oh, all right, I guess. Um, the third one was what makes bread sour? Um, it was not that good, but it gave me enough research. And the last one was which is healthier, sourdough bread or regular bread? I learned that uh, sourdough bread is better than regular dough, regular sourdough bread, because it's easier to digest as you read it here. The next slide was the practical. For the practical, I'm gonna carry out two. One where I'm making the sourdough step by step and the other, I'm basically gonna make regular bread. This is the starter recipe. And that was my starter. This is some facts about the starter that you can read to yourself. And I did this for seven days continuously. This is the recipe I used. And this was the difference between sourdough bread and other types of bread. So as you see, regular bread is more longer and it's more closer together. And sourdough bread has compressed areas and some spread out areas. This was my observation on sourdough bread, and this was my regular bread. Now, my sourdough bread turned out to taste bitter than normal bread because of the lacidic acid. The texture has is chewy and had a crispy crust, and the smell was fresh yeasty from the starter. This is my observation on normal bread. Um, now, this is a question I saw a lot in the internet. It was, is sourdough bread healthy? Well, apparently it's healthier than normal bread because it digests easily and has a great source of several minerals such as iron and selenium. Sourdough bread has indigestible fibers that keep your gut healthy by feeding the good bacteria called probiotics that live there. Most people like eating it because of how different it tastes to normal bread. These are some health benefits that sourdough bread does. Science fact. Topic, biology genetics. Genetics is the study of how different qualities traits are passed, are passed down from parent to child. Genetics helps explain what makes you unique, why family members look alike, and why some diseases run in families. When we trace paths of these qualities, we are following packages of information called genetics. The definition of DNA. It is a self-replicating material which is, which is present in nearly all living organisms as a main construct of chromosomes. It's a carrier of genetic information. Who invented or really discovered DNA? Many people believe that American biologist Jane Watson and English physicist Francis Crick discovered DNA. 
1950s. In, rea in reality, it's not the case of rather DNA was first identified in the late 1860s by Swiss chemist Friedrich Messer. Scientists of DNA molecules. The concept of DNA molecule is shaped like a twisted ladder. James Watson and Francis Crick solved the structure of the DNA. Other scientists like Rossen Fricklin and Mekir Rickens also contributed to this discovery, the future of DNA. In the future, we may go much further than just comparing evidence from crime scene to no, to no suspect. Instead, we may use DNA for crime scenes to create descriptions of potential suspects or, identi or unidentified victims from a scratch via a method called DNA parenthotyping. Why did I choose DNA? I chose DNA because I found it very interesting and I found it as an opportunity to show to show myself and to learn about something new that we haven't learned in year 8. How far is DNA different to one of our bacteria? DNA of a bacteria is mostly contained in a singular molecule called the bacterial chromosome. The chromosome along with several proteins and RNA molecules form an irregularly shaped structure called the nucleoid. In condition to the chromosome, the bacteria often contains plasmids, a circular piece of DNA. While DNA, or something I can't read, acid, is the heritory material in humans and most and almost all other organisms. Nearly every cell in a person's body has the same DNA. Credibility. There is no specific different definition for credibility. It can be described in many different ways, but the definition that is most commonly used is not to lie. However, sometimes the truth or if some things is fake and some thing is real. The variable. My variable is this thing I'll keep the same. The thing I'll keep the same is the DNA. For example, the human DNA will stay um, feminine dependent variable. The thing I will change is the DNA from different females. The DNA from different kinds of spermatozoa. Yeah. Would you carry out this experiment? As there are many pictures on websites that are on the internet, both inside of bacteria DNA and human DNA, the first thing we can do is compare the two. Next, we will look under a microscope and see the basic differences, e.g. color, shape, size, etc. For this experiment, you need a microscope, slides, and both types of DNA. The outcome. If it has been done correctly, you should have a visual on both types of DNA. Therefore, you should easily be able to differentiate between both types. Issues I am facing. Well, the main thing is, is that I don't have the proper equipment to make either an experiment or a model. What would it look like if you were creating a model and how, and how to make it? If you were creating a model, you would mainly need clay, paint, a sharpie, and a paper. First off, you would need to construct a human DNA vector, a human and a bacteria DNA accurately by looking by images from Google. You would need to make the inside and the outside, cut it in half while making a cross section. You would then need to add small papers sticking out explaining what it is pointing to. Here are some examples below.